Welcome to Music Matters Podcast with Daryl Craig Harris, talking about all things music with celebrities, artists, music business insiders, and more. Hello, Emma Tinas. How you doing? Hi, I'm good. How- I'm good. We're, so we're actually both in Vegas, but we're doing the Skype thing because of, I guess, the times and <laughs> it's a little bit easier for scheduling. Yeah. Um, so you're, let's, let's talk about, uh, there's actually, we're going to give a little bit of your history in our pre-roll, but um, so you're actually a New York native. When, how did how did you first get involved in, in singing and dancing and all the stuff that you do? I started, well, I grew up in um, uh, upstate New York in Rochester. Awesome. Uh, I uh, When I was two, uh, my parents put me in dance class. So I started really, really, really young. And then I started, uh, I went to a great uh, dance school and uh, I started competing uh, in national competitions when I was eight. And I uh, came with a professional ballet company when I was eight. And so I was really hardcore, hardcore dancing. And then um, when I was 11, um, we had a rule in my house. You had to take a musical instrument until you graduated high school. It was like this rule. So we all start Suzuki violin when we were three and then, you know, try another stuff. So I was taking flute lessons. I wasn't very good. And, um, <laughs> my, you know, to take with somebody else and my music teacher, the girl I was taking it with could sing. And she gave her this audition for a professional musical. And then out of like pure, like, oh, here's one for you too. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to go. I was like, I want to go. And I always sang like with my family, my mom's side's very musical, oh, but it was so impactful. Uh, and I did chorus and stuff like that. It was just, you know, music for me was always instruments. Um, and I went to this audition and I, I booked it and I got the understudy to the lead. And so, wow. and, and one of the characters. And so it was, uh, my first experience in theater was a professional one, which was cool. And I really loved that. Like uh, at that point with dancing, I was kind of starting to burn out a little bit. Um, so when I was about 15, I stopped just doing dancing and I kind of really fell into the musical theater. Hmm. So that's kind of how I kind of got started. And then for college, I decided I wanted to um, focus on my acting. So I just, I got my BFA in, in acting, but I got casting. So. Awesome. And actually, I know we, because we've actually been friends for a long time and we've done gigs together. Um, yeah. uh, Frank, our friend Frankie Shinta and some other stuff. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know, our good friend Frankie. Um, and one of the things we talked about was actually you went to school, a part of your schooling was actually in London. Tell me about how that happened and that experience. Yeah. Um, I actually uh, I had a very dramatic breakup with like my first love in college when I was like 19. I was very, very big deal. And I was like, I just can't be here anymore. It's too much. And uh, they, there was a program where you could study for a semester. And uh, usually the BFA, you're not allowed to leave the program because it's very scheduled and set sure. up. Um, but uh, the head of our department uh, was really encouraging. And he was like, I think you should go and just kind of experience you know, training over there in theater. Right. And so I got permission to go. And I learned more in that semester than I had learned in, in two years. Yeah. Uh, I was really lucky because I was a kid, I was already going to an after school professional acting school. So I had a lot of experience when I went into college. So like the first few years I was learning a lot, but a lot of it was like things I had, I had done. So I was just kind of like, kind of wanting to really get challenged. And over there, their approach to performance is so different. Right. In America, there just was a, a lot of a focus on like, you know, what are you, what's your look, what's your type, what's the, <laughs> over there, they're just like, do the work, do the scene. Right. Yeah, and so they like, I, and they like the London, I mean, what's, I mean, similar to Broadway, but they like different looks, and there's a lot of different opportunities, right? Yeah, they're all about, can you act, can you sing, can you dance, like, they don't care how cute you are, and then that, <laughs> that screen, it was kind of like, wow, I was spending a lot of time worrying so much about, you know, what type am I, is this, that, and the other, it was getting in my way, and then over there, they just didn't care, and I also, was exposed to the most incredible pieces of theater I'd ever seen. And it really made me see like possibilities of what you can do as an entertainer from the simplicity of playing a gig in a bar to doing a huge production show, how important it is to like devour every lyric and, and communicate what you're doing and not, not lose that. So that was a huge, um, 
a wake up call. And so at, right then I knew I wanted to do my grad work in London. So yeah, it's, it's such a, I mean, I, I go to London quite a bit and I have a lot of friends that are, you know, performers there and that kind of thing. And it's great because it's just like New York, it's a melting pot and you get people, oh. not only, not only British, but everybody, I mean, it's a, it's a big pull for people around the world. Right. It's nuts. I mean, I, I the music alone, we're just now getting music that I was hearing over there 10 years ago. Like it's, <laughs> yeah. the fashion, it's so forward. And they, when I uh, decided I wanted to do my grad work there, it was a program where it was, everyone was from a different country. So the Central School of Speech and Drama through the Royal Academy. And I was kind of like, I was the only American female. Wow. Uh, and it was terrifying audition. <laughs> it just said silent performance. And I was like, what? What's that? <laughs> what do I do? And so I worked with um, an incredible uh uh, hoofer like tap dancer I was like I really want to do a piece um dedicated to uh survivors of slavery in America uh -huh. I was like, want to do this cool piece and so we broke down all these different like uh rhythms that were everything from like a uh, gospel to uh like ancient tribal to the sounds of like the, the suffering of that time and we kind of broke it down and wow. I was scared to do it and I just wanted it to be so perfect and I did my piece you know in America we we love the slow clap the big clap <laughs> yes. England it's like no emotions ever right so I think I was like good duh, finish and they were like thank you I was like cool awesome. uh, I think I did I think and, I did good but <laughs> I was like, okay hate me. awesome thank you but they um but they were like we were really excited for you to join our program and I had wow. to stay I was like oh well, thank you so much and I walked out was like ugly cried yeah so that's cool. I mean that's that's a big deal I'm sure it's got to be so competitive to get in there it was nuts. I think my naivete worked in my favor because I was mm -hmm. so just, just wanted to be there so bad. I was just ignoring all the factors against me, which is kind of like a, a set a mindset I brain my like brainwashed myself into. Yeah. Is I don't pay attention to what is going on around me and just focus on the actual gig itself or what I want to do. Stay in the and, moment. Yeah. Yeah, because it kind of just distractions are nothing but distractions. They won't help you in right. any way. Now, I learned really young the danger of being competitive. Uh, I was really lucky to learn that at like the age of nine, in in a in like in dance and stuff. The dangers of of doing that because it's never enough. You're never satisfied, right. and it just creates a negative undertone under your work because you're constantly, you know, competing or paranoid, and so um, it kind of keep it gets you into a place that's just not good, you know, creatively. So. Yeah. And what, kind of what you find, I mean, I, I found this too, at least for myself, is that, I mean, first of all, that that nervous energy can actually work in your favor if you can, oh, if you God, can yeah. yeah, if you can control it, of course, that's the challenge. <laughs> but, but also too, like, at, you know, as far as the casting thing goes, and I found that out with Cirque, like you kind of, at some point, you just kind of come in and you do what you do. And mm -hmm. they either like you or they don't like you. And you don't necessarily know what they're really looking for if for auditions. Right? No, especially Cirque. It's like, you could yeah, go that's a whole other world. <laughs> smell it. They'd be like, I don't yes. know about energy. And you're like, what? Right. You know, but I, I've gotten cast for things um, that I was surprised I got cast for. And for the reason why, like I, um, I auditioned for a musical and it's a part I really, really wanted like years ago in New York. It was a regional gig. And I went in and I sang that, you know, they give you 16 bars. Mm -hmm. I, I was 16 and they were like, okay, great. Thank you. And I was like, oh man, because for me, it's like, get the call back. If you're right. not getting the call back, something's wrong. Um, after you hit the call back, it's, you know, all these other factors, but I didn't get called back and I always do. So I was like, oh man. <laughs> and I, I booked the role. It was like a leading role. And later mm -hmm. in rehearsal, I asked, I was like, how did you guys pick me like that? I was like, I didn't even read for you. I didn't dance, nothing. I just came in and was like, blah, 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 and laughed. And you guys and he said that, um, he said, well, your resume spoke for itself. He was like, you clearly had, he's like, you have two degrees in acting. He's like, you've got all this, you know, experience. He goes, and all this dance experience he goes, and our pianist, when I left the room, he was like, if you don't hire her, he's like, I'm quitting. He's like, that is the only person <laughs> who said good morning to me. Right, exactly. Thank you. He goes, that's the only person who's been polite to me all day. So yeah. I literally this role because I was polite to the pianist you know what that is something that's so important right 
Yeah, you just, you never know. I've also not gotten jobs because in the past, because I didn't have a strong enough social media following. Yeah. At the time, I was kind of like, oh my God, well, I need to fix that. And so it's, I did. It's funny I, about that too, because, well, I mean, you know that I do a lot of social media stuff. And yeah. what I tell people, I mean, if I can give advice to people, um, new artists, people trying to get established, is the first thing they're going to do after you talk with them is they're going to go to your social pages. Especially if you're a singer or if somebody that needs to draw a crowd or anything like that, yep. that is such a valuable lesson. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, and I think I think a lot of people. I understand why they have a chip on their shoulder about it because it's kind right. of it's kind of like one of those things that we weren't prepared for. It's new, right. and it feels frustrating. But at the same time, it kind of goes back to that, that mindset like you can't get distracted. Yep. Like it's business. So if someone tells me like, "Hey, your social media following is only a thousand. It should be more because I would be offering them free marketing. I'd be right. offering, them, you know, fandom. And also they want to know if people like what I do, which quite frankly, I would check too, if I'm honest. So I was yeah. kind of like, because well, we're gonna, and we're going to talk about that because you also function as a show producer and that's part of what you do, yeah. right? Yeah. So it, it made sense to me. And so I, 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 I worked with somebody, I told them, I was like, look, I don't want fake followers. I want to be real. So when mm -hmm. someone looks up, they they won't see like purchased. Right. Following right. Yep. real and it and they were like absolutely and I got everything up and now it's like great and where I want to be and of course oh you always want more but it's it and it has helped me a lot I've gotten a lot of people mm -hmm. reaching out to me because of my following or getting gigs through that so I think that's the thing with uh, artists and musicians and performers is that there's nothing wrong with moving forward with the times and like a mistake we can make is getting stuck yeah and they can't hire you if they don't know about you <laughs> right <laughs> you know, that's it. You know, and yeah, I think people get really frustrated by it, which I totally understand. But at the same time, I'm kind of like, yeah, but it's a business. You know, yep. it's just a business. It's not anything emotional. We just get emotional because we put yeah. that into our work. And it could be intimidating, especially, I mean, I, as a woman, especially too, because of all the social pressures and, and all that. I mean, it's, it's very, yeah. com it's a complicated thing, but it is an important part of what we do, I think. I mean, whatever. I was raised with boys, so I kind of approached it, but <laughs> yeah. I'm just. How far do you want me to throw the ball? All right, I'll throw the ball. You know, catch right. the ball. Yeah. It's so like, tell me, tell me about, um, tell me about coming to Vegas. How did that? How, what was your motivation for coming to Vegas? How, how long have you actually been here? I think uh, I've been here eight years now. I uh, think eight years. Um, my best friend from college, uh, my friend Andrew, he was living here, and he had been like slowly, like emotionally blackmailing me to come for a few. <laughs> And um, whenever I had breaks on gigs, I was doing, um, the, uh, he'd fly me out here and I do like a small, like I did like a small concert with uh, Travis Clore at the Liberace Museum when it was still here. Right. Little things like that. He was just kind of like giving me like a taste of like what it would be like to live here kind of a thing. And um, I was kind of like, oh, that's cute. I was like, but honestly, I'm not like, see, I got my own way. I was like, I'm not the right body type, not the right look for Vegas. Cause to me, it was like showgirls. Right. And, and Vegas, look. I mean, if you're a New York actor, Vegas is, I mean, although yeah. it's changed, that's really like, changed. Uh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, once again, I just, my own ignorance. But um, when I, uh, I ended up meeting my husband and he's a uh, professional uh, stage rigger and he was a commercial diver back in the day. And I was like, dude, there's a water show in Vegas that Cirque does called, oh, I'm like, you're like beyond perfect for this show because you, you're like, yeah, you know stage and scuba. Right. Yeah, I was like, you're not like, oh, on vacation, let's let's scuba for fun. I was like, you were like drilling underwater in sub-zero degrees. And he's an excellent uh, aerial rigger. He's really good. So, mm -hmm. and I was working with him at the time. And so he applied and of course they snagged him. And so we, we moved out here and I was really lucky. The day I flew in, I booked a show. Wow. Oh, it was nuts. And I was like, this is crazy. And I've just worked consistently. So I've just kind of like gig to gig to gig uh, since I've been here. And uh, it's been really cool. Yeah, you're actually, I mean, honestly, like you're probably the busiest person I know. <laughs> it's like, it's pretty crazy. And it's what's great about you too, is it's versatility, which is a big part of what you do. Um, and then also being, putting your own shows together, putting your own bands together. So talk about that. Like what, what, where did that come from for you? Um, well, part of my master's is uh, show creation. Oh, okay. So when I was getting that, we would learn on Monday, we would have like a nine hour uh, lecture on uh, how to make a particular way of making a show. So 
we would have one day where it'd be like resource. So you have like an object or a thing and then the show idea comes from that or like environment. They put you in a random place. You have to build a show in the environment, things like okay. that. And then, uh, and then by the end of the week, we would create like a 20 minute piece. So I was making stuff on the fly, like really fast. Right. And so that was something I always kind of wanted to do, but I'm very um, particular about it. And at the time I was doing a show and it was just really frustrating. We were having all these like creation, is the team was having creation issues and whatnot. Yeah. And Cause it's hard to put together a show. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Right. And being like the, one of the producers was talking to me and I was like, I, you know, I just don't have to do this in this particular scene. And they were like, yeah, well, no one's going to come to a show in Vegas unless you're in your underwear. And I was like, what? <laughs> I literally was like, I'm going to write something where it doesn't matter. And right. still cool, and it's still sexy, and it's still awesome. And I, I started to write Alice. So, yeah, which is sort of um, explain Alice because I've seen it and I've actually shot photos for you. But that's a great yeah. show, great show. It's the whole thing. Alice was it kind of it really progressed um, story wise, but in, in essence, in the concept is uh, in this Wonderland, and Alice comes down the rabbit hole like every day, and all these characters from the book they kind of seduce her and get her to hang out and everything's so great. And then they get her to smoke the caterpillar's hookah and it's poisonous uh -huh. and that kills her. And then they take her soul and they give it to the red queen. And that's how the red queen survives. She eats souls of little girls. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so this particular section is what happens if Alice survives. Okay. So in this particular show, she goes to smoke the hookah and then she doesn't die. And then like chaos ensues. So I started, uh, I, I love all types of music and I always kind of go for it lyrically, but mm -hmm. I like um, kind of rearrange it. So it sounds a little different. So I kind of, that's how I kind of started building the show. So like a lot of people kind of gave me grief for not using like White Rabbit and like certain songs that are very Alice right. Wonderland. Yeah, they're like, real obvious picks. Yeah, right? like that's not what I want to do. And randomly my mom uh when she got her second master's uh, she wrote a really really awesome uh dissertation on lewis carroll hmm. and uh, i learned so much about him in particular and i i just kind of pulled a lot from uh his experiences and and why he wrote those books and yeah you know, he, had, he had an interesting life to himself so it's all it, it's all in his writing right very interesting man and the first book i mean god bless everyone's like it's about drugs and this <laughs> No, it's just not. Um, mm -hmm. Book was really popular at the time because like India imperialism was like the new thing. Right. So it was like a little cool thing. It'd be like if a vape pen was in a show now and everyone was like, oh my God, that vape pen about, you know, the mountains and the environment. And we were all like, no, man, we were just vaping. Like, you exactly. know, was, You're just doing your thing. You know, <laughs> I kind of, kind of liked how he left it ambiguous enough to be a misinterpreted. So that's kind of mm -hmm. how I started building Alice. So I kind of went with like a neo-Victorian yeah. uh, punk look. And then uh, yeah, sort I wanted- of steampunk kind of vibe. Yeah. Right? I started out with like more of a steampunk look, but then steampunk unfortunately kind of took off. And I was like, no, no. So yeah, I you don't want to jump on that. Yeah. Adjusted it to more of a, a neo-Victorian kind of a feel because he had very strong feelings about Victorian England, his, his distaste of that. So- I kind of with that. And then uh, every time we would do the show, I would change something. Mm -hmm. So that way it was always fresh and, and new. And, you know, we were supposed to do it in one venue the day before they kicked us out because they accidentally rebooked the room. And then yeah. what are we going to do? And the owner of the Tuscany, Brett Hears, uh, Kenny Davidson actually told Brett what was happening. And yeah, Brett Kenny Kenny is actually a very omnipresent keyboard player, musical director oh, here in Vegas. He's I, everywhere. <laughs> and of course, I'm like, what are we going to do? And uh, Brett <laughs> room for free, didn't charge me, and uh, we fire code. So many people came, and I was so happy because I, you know, when you're making something, you never know if people will like it. You know, sure. and then seeing the response was cool. And I kind of pulled together this like dream team of of people. Yeah. And how, um, how many people are, are in that show? Because it's a lot. And you have a live band too and the whole the whole the, thing. It's a show. 10 piece band. Uh because I used to be a nine, but I added um a violin. So mm -hmm. uh so it's a 10 piece band and then the cast is nine. Wow. But um I, you know, I'm at a point now where <clears throat> excuse me, I want to like scrap everything and start over. Because mm -hmm. that's the 
too, I'm, I'm very like, it can always be more, it can always be better. Right. So I'm always kind of rewriting things. And then I've I mean, also- that's, that's a big reason, Han, too, I think why you've been so successful, because you keep reinventing yourself. And as, as artists, musicians, that's a, basically integral to what we do, especially under the COVID yeah. situation and all that, right? Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, you can't, I think it's really easy to get in your own way uh, as an artist because you think you're X, Y, Z. Right. And it's so important to, to listen to feedback, even and negative and positive. Um, and you can cipher out what's real and what's not. But um, like a, an example is that there's a show out here, a fantasy. Mm-hmm. I never auditioned for fantasy ever because I've been like, no, I'm not, you know, sexy. Yeah. Like those girls are like, so like gorgeous. And we were- driving- Where is uh, fantasy? Is that, which, where is a that lot- at? Yeah. And, it, and it's basically, yeah, like it's a very sexy, it's tasteful, very, a very sexy it's show. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's like, and I'm like, right. <laughs> you know, like, I don't see myself that way. And we were sure. on Disneyland and um, I told my husband, I was like, oh yeah, there's an audition there today. And he turned the car around and he was like, get in there and sing. And I was like, no, I don't want to waste their time. He's like, get in there. So I literally go in there in like my Mickey Mouse t-shirt. I was like, really? <laughs> and I didn't get eight bars out. I was like, blah, 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 blah. And they stopped me. And I was like, how embarrassing. And the producer, <laughs> she literally was like, oh my God, I'm so happy you're here. You're hired. And I got hired like that. Yeah. Because I had an idea in my head that I wasn't enough. And that was wrong. So right. that's why it's important to, um, to push your, I mean, keep it real. Like don't audition for something that you know is, not possible that is a clear not right. a possibility like i'm not going to audition for the color purple clearly like, <laughs> right <laughs> i got you you know like that is not i mean but the great the great thing about you is is that you actually are are the whole package because you have a great look and you're nice which it counts for a lot right being nice goes a long way because there's lots of talented yeah. folks but talented nice and easy to work with is a, a m- amazing combination it's hard. Yeah. And that's my whole thing is I'm like, you know, and I, I had a hard time when I moved here. I got a lot of pushback and it was really hurtful. It was hard. It was hard. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand it at the time. And I was trying to, you know, be nice and like, be yeah, friendly. find your place. And- yeah. And it was, I got a lot of pushback and it was, it was really tough. I shed a lot of, you know, tears on that one, but it, it made me realize that you just have to put up boundaries. Like, it doesn't, you have to protect your own energy and, and uh, it don't get distracted by, you know, someone who may just have an agenda, doesn't matter how nice you are. Yeah. And so I'm just going to focus on my work and, you know, I want to, I've always wanted to be a, a good person and good to work with and easy. I love the fact that if someone can say, oh, you call Anne, she's so reliable. That makes yeah. me happier than anything in the world. Like when I first worked with Frankie, I, I didn't even get a rehearsal. I literally filmed his show on my ipad and wrote all the lyrics out and like figured it out because yeah. you just get thrown in out here there's no well that's the thing right it's not practice. it's not how it used to be where we'd have rehearsals and blah 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 that's actually very rare anymore if i get a rehearsal i'm like really exactly. we're rehearsing <laughs> oh my god like and that was terrifying because i i have a lot of respect for frankie uh, he's from buffalo which is like 45 minutes from my hometown yeah, and Frankie, and, we should tell people who Frankie is. So Frankie Shinta has been in, yeah, they've been in, they've had the, the the show he had originally with his family for years, very popular on the East Coast. And we go to, we could play on the East Coast and we'd sell out these 2,000 seat rooms that even big, big, you know, huge pop artists can't do. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Well, he's just, he's just a a legend and he's, he's just a force like, of nature. <laughs> yeah, like hardcore Italian. Right. So, I mean, he was a child prodigy in music. Like he's he's completely untaught, like just self-taught musician. He plays a multitude of instruments, but he's tough. He's tough. He does not play. So I was, first of all, freaking out that he even asked me to cover um, because he doesn't just do that. You know, he's very particular. And then, you know, I was like, if I mess this up, I was like, it will be the most horrible experience of my life. And so the whole show, I just was like, kind of pretty much in a full panic attack for about 45 minutes uh, and, and fear. But like, like you learn how to harness that energy. And it ended up being one of the most magical experiences. And he gave me the biggest hug after. And he was like, that was so fun. And I've been able to work with him since. And every time it's, it's a rare occasion that uh, you get to work with an artist 
and the band is always just like sick, amazing and fun. Um, it's just, it's so cool when you, when you are able to jump in and that's something about Vegas too. There's just, you have, it's fast. It's kind of yeah. like New York, they had a baby is, is it? <laughs> and that's so actually, and there's a lot of New Yorkers here too. So yeah, it's got the hustle, like the intense hustle. There's really no agents out here and it's, you kind of have to do it on your own right. and then you know, and then there's all the other stuff that comes with it. So you, you just have to be, my God, just be on time. <laughs> just be on you time. know what? And it's funny because like, that sounds like such a simple thing, right? But <laughs> It's true though. I have will always be shocked at the, the lateness. And I've watched really great people literally fall off the grid because of yep. late or unprepared, like, like, like unprepared. And I'm kind of like, how did you you've had this forever. How do you not know? Cause right. you'll get, especially with the corporate gigs out here, you'll get, it's fast. Yeah. So they and it's, really, I mean, those gigs are, I mean, it's real money. I mean, it's really, like, yeah. $3,000 to be like, da -da 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 -da, and that's it. You know, <laughs> exactly. like, are you really, but you have to be fast and, and hold your own. Yeah. That's the thing too. I think it's so important that you don't get, if you want to be like a performer, not like just, uh, not just records, but I mean, in that area, if you want to just record, that's fantastic. But if you want to do like live performance and more with it in that area, you have to take dance class. You have to be able to know, especially with the women, how to wear a dress, walk in heels, little things like that. You know, I'll coach uh, college kids and I'll be shocked where the, you know, they're seniors and they don't know how to wear a heel. And I'm like, yeah, that's a part of big part of what you do, especially here. Yeah. You just have to, I mean, I've been given six inch heels and I was like, good God, help me. I'm going to die. But you got to sing you, and walk. <laughs> oh my God. It's terrifying. I, you have to figure it out because that's the thing. It's business. Like, I think that's the thing that musicians, it's such a difficult balance because you have to be creative. You have to be buzzing with that creativity and be open enough to make your music and perform your, your, you know, your innermost thoughts and be vulnerable to do that. So important. But at the same time, it's like, business what's your yeah. look what's your logo you know who are you how do you represent yourself don't compare yourself to somebody else are right. you original all those things it's such an all-encompassing thing and they have to both be catered to yeah and it's i mean it you know that's this is the i guess they would say the entertainment capital of the world people could dispute that but i mean a lot of gigs that go on around the world come out of vegas like i've done gigs at monte carlo i've done gigs all over the planet that came out of here right which i know you do the same yeah. And so like, it's, it's no joke. And the corporate gigs are, I mean, for a working person, a working musician, those are, can be your lifeblood. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's important. That's why you have to be, you know, if you're, you know, a, a bassist, like you're a bassist, if it's right. like, well, I, I only do funk, I won't do other <laughs> exactly. stuff. Kind of yeah. like, well, good. good. Luck. Exactly. Yeah. Kind of like you know, vocalists too. Like I'm willing to, like, there are there certain genres I prefer to sing? Of course, because it's something I really like. But if they give me, you know, X, Y, Z to do, I'm going to I'm gonna go 100 on it because yep. if anything, um, I don't have to be the best at it as long as I'm learning something new. And I might, you know, it, it'll help me to be a better performer and I'll, and I'll learn it's important. Yeah, and they want to see that you're willing to do that because some people yep. that, we, that we all know aren't willing to do that. They just, this is what I do. And if you don't like it... <laughs> It's like, okay, well, I don't know what to do with that, right? Well, I mean, I, if someone's like that and I, and the, that's what, that's the, the flag they fly, I'm just like, all righty. It's the complaining afterwards that yeah. I'm kind of like, <laughs> you can't really complain if you're only going to do funk. My work was never anything that I had ever pursued. I've subbed in on a few band gigs, which is a terrifying thing, of course. Um, but uh, <laughs> you're like, what's happening? But uh I got asked my friend, uh, Peter Fand, he played bass in Baz. Mm -hmm. He called me um, after the show had closed and said, hey, there's this corporate gig uh, for a band. Do you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, sure. And we kind of unintentionally did a good job. Um, it was kind of like a funky, they didn't quite want postmodern jukebox, but they just kind of wanted a jazz feel. Something a little different. Like, yeah. And we were, we're like all nerds. We we're like, welcome to this nerdy group of jazz people. So we were like, no problem. <laughs> And ended up going really well and we started to book. Mm. So we kind of fell into that by accident. So when COVID hit, um, Peter got a call from uh, Best Agency and they said, you know, we've seen you guys and we're we're gonna put a band 
in at the Venetian while this insanity is going on. Right. Um, something happening because we can't have what's there now. And so they called us. And this is like a typical jump in. You know, the, the first thing they sent me was a, a video of this incredible jazz band in Italy hmm. singing in Italian. They're like, can you do this? And I was like, no. <laughs> yeah, I was like, not in Italian. <laughs> Make it till I make it. So I like wrote all this stuff fanatically, crying internally. Uh, but we we went in the first day and they uh, they were so supportive and they're like, well, we we kind of like what you guys do. Why don't you do what you do? So we started to do our stuff. Oh, great. And we never knew if we had a gig the next week. It was always like, are we back next week? Are we here? Are we going? So yeah. every week we'd be like, yeah, come back. And as a result, uh, it'll be I think like a year in May. Wow. We've been there and um, now we're over. They they put us uh, now that more entertainment's allowed to come back. They put the pianist back in that area. And now they built us this beautiful stage and mm. on the plot side. So now we've got this big stage and yeah, and you have th thousands of people coming through there every day, right? Well, not during COVID so much. Well, right, not right now. Yeah. But um, we've got some great stories though of like who <laughs> did. Uh, but it's been really cool. We've we've managed to get this really cool rapport with all the the stores like around that that walking area and um you know and i get to play with these i mean it's like uh me peter fan mikey j and, and john wiedemeyer so like we're yeah, all just like, players yeah there's just ridiculous and once again no rehearsal we just kind of god god bless them i write these crazy medleys and i'm like i have this idea we're gonna do this 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 and they're all like yeah sure let's try it and like yeah. that's how we do so well, those I are the guys you want to work with right <laughs> yeah Thank you. It's it's like a very no ego, really cool group of dudes who just love to play music. And that's like the kind of people you really want to, I've learned, that's mm -hmm. the kind of people I just need to surround myself with because, you know, in this business too, there can be so much negativity and aggression. And I just have zero time for that. Zero. So as soon as it even comes near me now, I just cut it off completely. I'm just like, I'm sorry. Good luck to you. Like, yeah, I I'm exactly the same way. And yeah, you know, you know part of that is I, I always say it sounds kind of cliche, but building your tribe, building your tribe of people that you want to work with. Yeah. And, I mean, and we, we luckily we work with a lot of the same folks, but yeah, um, that's so important, right? As, as, I mean, as a producer, as an entertainer, knowing who to call and yeah. knowing that, that they're going to show up, they're going to be nice, prepared, all that's so important. It just takes the stress off and like, I've worked with enough really difficult uh, personalities to see that it's such a, it's such a losing game. Like, it's just like, they're, they're never happy. It's always everyone else's fault and they're the victim and blah, blah, blah. And just talking terrible about people online and all this stuff. I just can't be around that. I'm just like, you know, yeah. you know, that I just, I just can't, I just can't even engage in it. It's just, it's too much. And it's, that has been hard. Um, just watching like a lot of really nasty stuff going on online in our community, like during COVID. And I know a lot of it has to do with just the- People are frustrated and stressed and yeah. Just the stress of losing gigs. I mean, I lost some big, like life-changing gigs. Like it was not, like to a point where like, I couldn't even cry about it because it was just like- Nothing you can do, yeah. Nothing I could do, but it was, it was a hard hit and it's been really tough on people. But at the same time, um, you know, I, I just don't ever think there's an excuse to be abusive towards anybody in, right. in their stress. And seeing that kind of really going after people online and stuff has been has been a, a disappointing. But time, yeah, some, some, like, something and something I kind of decided to do a while a while ago, or actually a long time mm -hmm. ago, is I want to celebrate my friends' successes. And I don't see people as I don't other bass players and musicians. I don't I don't I don't want to see them as competition. I want to see them as colleagues. And I'm happy if people work. I'm happy if everybody works. And Me too. I mean, that means we're all going to work. Like if someone is working in a really difficult time when there's no jobs, that is awesome because that means there's there's still hope. a need to do. There's and hope. everyone <laughs> works. Yeah, they still they still like us. Like the other thing too is everywhere I've I have worked has been really strict with. The, the COVID rules. And that was the thing for me. I was like, I want to make sure I'm safe. Right. I, I'm not, you know, I, I need to take care of myself. I have my own health things I have to be very careful about and people I love. And everywhere I've worked has been extremely strict. I'm singing with a mask on at two gigs. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. You have to change your placement. You have to change how you're breathing. The first day I almost fainted because I was breathing too hard. I was, you know, 
do yeah, what you, I know. You hyper kind of hyper compensate for. I've never complained. I've never said a word because it's what is going on right now. And they made it clear to me. And I was like, that's fine. If this is what it is, it's what it is. And I sing with a mask on. Like there are things mm-hmm. that, you know, and if it, I've been asked to do gigs where I felt a little uncomfortable with just like kind of like the rules were almost kind of being broken, but not really. And I was yeah. kind of like, you know, I'm just going to say no, thank you right now, just because I got to take care of myself and just make sure with yeah. whatever's happening, rah, rah. But there's always a choice. There's always a choice. And um, I just think that it's, it's so I'm always sharing what people are doing because I want people to see what they're doing. You know, they're yeah. incredible. Like the, 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 uh, the, um, there's just some incredible women who are doing these awesome gigs. I want to make sure people hear it. Like Rita Lim is probably, she's a singer here in town. One of the most supportive singers. She's just one of the sweetest people. She just loves to sing. She sounds yeah. exactly like Karen Carpenter. She's hey, ridiculous. just going to say Karen Carpenter. <laughs> I was like, I've been Karen Carpenter in my face all day, all day yeah. long. Yep. And she's so supportive and, and is always, you know, sharing people's things. And she and I are always talking about like, you know, did you see what this person's doing? This is so exciting. Or like, you know, reaching out to each other to say like, Hey, I saw you doing this. It's really cool. Michelle Johnson's another one. Like we're always checking in being like, Hey, how's it going? I saw you're doing this. That sounds dope. I, I listened to the video it, and uh, sky to miles. You know, there's just certain people that, you know, it's, uh, and the and guys, those are, those are all like world-class epic just singers, yeah. ridiculous, ridiculous singers. And the, the cool thing is, is that, you know, we're all, you know, Cassie stone, there are yeah. just people in this town who are just like sick, talented, and are being faced with insanely difficult challenges in this time. And they still reach out and check and see like how I'm doing, how someone else is doing, sharing each other's stuff. I just, that is like the coolest thing about this town is that there are enough, even more of us who don't succumb to all that negative, stupid stuff. They are just constantly supporting each other. And, and it just really creates a great environment where you know, I got your back. If you need something like I'm, Oh, if I can't do a gig, I've got five girls. I'm like, these yeah. girls are all going to be on time, ready to work. And and that's the thing too. We, we support each other. I, I've gotten sick and, and couldn't cover my band and mm-hmm. my book cover, uh, Jackie, who's fantastic. She was out of town right. called Christina Shaw, who had like never even had a rehearsal. And she was like, I'm on my way. Yeah. And not only, you arrive on time she looked mint right like, oh, there's all up but and, and kills she it killed, right <laughs> and she killed it and then she was like are you feeling okay i was like my god thank you. and i'm like Bleh. what's but funny just, about that and what's awesome is that i mean all those not not only are they great talents but they're great ladies yeah and, and what's what's really great about that is none of you guys are intimidated or are like oh i'm not gonna call her she's gonna take my gig it's like you want the best person to do the yeah. job so people, when they know if you can't make it, that's going to be somebody killer that's going to come in, right? That's a mistake girl, uh, girls, men and women make. I think they'll, they'll call a sub that they know isn't the strongest because they're like, that way I'll solidify. And I'm like, <laughs> no, now the person who bought the product is like, the heck? Like, that's the thing. It's, it's important to, that's why I always say stay in your lane. Like, look, Jackie Wyatowski can sing R&B all over my face and around the corner <laughs> and I'd be like doo, 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 doo. like that's just not where I I live that's where she lives and I celebrate that 100,000 percent before I even knew her because right. it was just like what a beautiful talent beautiful girl she's so amazing blah 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 because I I know who I am and I know what I do and mm-hmm. the last thing I'm going to do is project my insecurity on somebody else that's such a waste of time and it's just, you know, here's an innocent person, like just doing their thing yeah. and someone's just coming for them. Cause that's happened to me so many times. I've had people come up to me. I've never even met. Oh, I, you know, yeah, we can all, like, agree. We all know that and story. Like, and they're like, oh, so-and-so said this about you. And I was like, we've never met. I don't, exactly. I, I'm like, who is that? And yeah. it, it's frustrating. And I used to, you know, be like, well, and I that oftentimes that. that comes from, it comes from their insecurity. And once, as you get older and wiser, Oh God. You, you realize that <laughs> it's not, it's not personal. It's just, it's their own thing. Whatever now, issues they have. Yeah. Now. I'm yeah. like, Oh really? Well, did you hear what else I did? I was like, I sacrificed a goat in the middle of the road and I drank <laughs> blood. 
set the street on fire, be sure to add that part in. <laughs> you know, it just, but it's it. The cool thing is that there's so many people uh, in town who are just really cool, and they just want to jam. I love like when we have a sub in for for my band Red Penny. It it is like a totally different feel, and it's so cool because everyone's so inviting. They're like, yeah, come on, let's yeah. go. And it just, we celebrate the new vibe as opposed to, oh, they don't sound like this person. Exactly. It's like, yeah. well, they're not here. So, right. And, and, they that, put in, and they put in the work and the effort to show up. And yeah. And they, and it's cool. It gives it like a whole new feel. And we're, it's nice to be around musicians who are so celebratory of that. Like, there's so many times we'll, you know, we won't be singing to many people at all because it's been so empty. And we'll finish a song and like, we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mikey's like laughing behind me. He's like, yeah, we sounded great. There's like yeah. two people in here that's like, hooray, <laughs> in the back. And we're like, yeah, yeah. music. That's what's, like what's, your, um, what's your advice to people, to I guess new performers or people that um, want to get into the business doing what you're doing or and that, that kind of thing? What's your best advice that you, you can give them? Um, be healthy, number one. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to especially with the singer mover world, uh, you got to spurt out a lot of energy real quick. So it's important to be in really good uh, heart shape. So that's mm -hmm. my first thing. Um, know who and what you are to a T, how to dress yourself, like what your body is, how to dress your body, how to do your hair, how to do your makeup. All those things are really important in Vegas because it's all about the glam and the, it's not casual. Um, it's, you know, a lot of times you have to do things on your own and present yourself as a, I always, I use the example of mustard, you know, what kind of mustard are you? Are you grape coupon or are you like oranges? Like, and if you are like, don't pretend to be grape coupon, but let them know if they want to add spice to your Frenches, they totally can. And you will grape upon it all day, every day. <laughs> so I'm always kind of like, know, know what condiment you are. Like, just know who you are, have songs that you can kill, have every genre ready to go. Out here, you have to sing everything from country to hardcore. So just know everything. And, um, you know, go to, of course, things open up. It's really good to go to open mics and just kind of let people hear you and, and to get to know people. You know, Kenny Davidson on Fridays at Tuscany's great, the bootlegger on Mondays right. with Kelly Holmes. It's really important to. And that's true of I, I, no matter where you are, is you've got to get out. People have to be able to hear you. But yeah, they have to hear you. And like, it's important to go where you will be heard. Like, don't waste your time on, do your research. Like, don't waste your time on a place that it's more like a local social, like gossipy thing. It's important to be heard by, you know, adult professional people. Right. Um, and my other advice is, you know, just you, you have, it's a hustler's town. No one's going to hold your hand and you should enjoy holding your own hand. You should, you should enjoy mm -hmm. Um, hustling on your own and you know if you ever have a question you need anything ask me like I'm I'm all about um, like the other day I, I didn't know I got a business card from somebody and I didn't quite know who they were and I was able to write like four different people and be like is this person a, you know is this something? they were like oh yeah I, I know yeah absolutely yeah. like and you want to have a good reputation that's important <laughs> yeah. yeah like you know people can say whatever but I mean in the end you know who is reliable. Be reliable. Be on time, and on time, I mean ten minutes early. Yep. It makes a huge difference, especially here. Especially here, and be prepared. You know, do you ask questions? Uh, do your job. Have stuff. Sometimes, you know, especially for the girls, they don't always have something for you to wear that fits you. Right. You know, make sure you know how to dress yourself quickly and what looks good. Uh, keep it fit, like you know, in a time where everyone's very uh, sensitive about, you know, body image and stuff, it's so important to be confident in yourself. Yeah. You no matter what size confident. you are, no matter how you look, it's, that's true yeah. just in life. <laughs> just have, like I'm naturally a blonde. Uh, they, my hair was dyed red for Baz when I was playing Satine and Baz. And uh, I started to book a lot of commercial work and I was like, oh, this kind of works for me. I'm just going to keep it. Right. And that's the thing. It's important to, you know, we are, it, it's New York and LA had a baby. So it's kind of like a combo of 
the New York theater feel, but also like the LA marketing commercial feel. So it's commercial too. Don't, don't get on your high horse. Don't think, oh, I'm not going to do that. Attend auditions, attend them. I've had people kind of make little, little, little comments to me like, oh, we'll save, you know, taking all the jobs, save one for us. And I'm kind of like, I didn't see you at the audition. I was there at 8 right. a.m. My leotard, like, <laughs> you know, my tights, tired on three protein bars and a lot of coffee. Right. So I'm kind of, you know, don't ever think you're too good to attend an audition. I'm like, and the thing got- about that, you know, the thing about that too is it kind of comes back to the old thing, like, you know, there might be one person in the audience, but that one person might change your life. Same thing with auditions, right? All those people that you meet, that casting director that's there, you know, a year from now, they may get a phone call looking for somebody who's can sing, that has red hair, that has blue eyes, and that's really mm-hmm. nice. Yeah, and that happens you- all the time. <laughs> I think um, uh, my friend, uh, Dan Ellis, is, you know, Dan is incredible. Yeah. Piano. We do like a duo, fun little thing. And we were doing a gig and there was literally nobody there. Nobody, nobody, nobody there. It was like four <laughs> hours of nobody. And, you know, I just love to perform. He's awesome. Yeah. The bartender was like, yeah. So we were performing our butts off. I was like singing like crazy. He's playing. We're like, woo, woo, to nobody. Just having a good old time. Cause I was like, hey, we're getting paid to do right. what we love. Here's That's the gig. Yeah. The bartender called the owner of this place and was like, you need to get down here. There is nobody here. And this girl's singing her butt off. And this guy is like ridiculously playing and singing. And they are like going crazy. He's like, there's literally no one here. The owner got in his car, drove down there and watched wow. us. We got booked again and yeah. again. And again. So like, that's the thing. You just have to, that's what I mean. Like, don't get in your head. Don't get in your own way. Just enjoy it. Does it stink when there's no one there? Yes, because it feels good to do your song and have people be like, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, good. Like, yeah. let's be real. But at the same time, we're doing this because we really love it. So when no one's there, tap into that and just, you know, of like, I really love what I do. I really love to perform and just go there because you never know. You never yeah. know. And plus, it's just good form. It's good form to be 100 all day, every day. You just never know where you're going to perform. Right. And you have attention to your audience, especially I would say that's another advice I would give for singers out here is really pay attention to your audience because it's really different out here. It's very eclectic. It's all different ages, all different countries. Some people like certain things. Some people don't like, it's really important to pay attention, especially if you're doing band work mm-hmm. because you're calling the songs. Right. So you be like, okay, they're not digging this. Yeah, you got to, you got to read, read what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, it's really important to pay attention. That's where Frankie is a genius. Is that he has completely figured out how to do a show where it's a complete journey and he's able to get like into a very, very emotional place and then kick it right back into humor and then kick it right back into amazing musicians. It is yeah. one of the brilliant. The first time I saw a show, I was, cr- I was ugly crying so bad <laughs> because I was out of pure respect yeah. that moment itself and also just like how this man has constructed i have a, a funny com- frankie frankie story well it's not it's not funny how i got with him but his his brother who had they had performed together for 45 years his brother passed away and yeah. i came in and auditioned with dan ellis our friend um a couple of months after that so frankie hired me and you know and we talked a little bit about money but oh did i lose you oh there you are oh, um and we talked you are. To- <laughs> we're good uh and we talked a little bit about money but i you know I, I don't when i like probably like you like obviously money's a part of it but i don't focus on the money i go and do the audition and whatever happens and uh so like three months or three weeks later he called me up and he said what did i tell you i was going to pay you for one nighters and I, I i told yeah so i told him the amount which which was was a good amount and he goes hey, i'm gonna pay you more <laughs> like who does that <laughs> like we finished the show and he was like what was I going to pay you? And I told him, and he was like, I'm paying you more than that. I was I like, know. No. He's like, he's like, I don't know, let me do what I'm doing. I was like, yeah, okay. yeah who then, does that, right? <laughs> all right. That's the thing, too. Like, um, even with COVID, I have made good money. Like, but there's a, but I worked really hard to get a reputation where I'm worth it. Yeah. And at the same time, it took time, years to get, to get there. Yeah. yeah like, you've got to show your worth. 
And so they know, they know when they write me a check for XYZ, they're going to get XYZ. They don't have to worry. Right. Um, a lot of people get undercut is like, they're just not quite sure. And with COVID, so many of these places are losing money. You can't yeah. walk with the arrogance of, I want two grand. It's like, bro, they don't have two grand to give you. Yeah, be so realistic. Yeah. You can say, hey, look, I'll sign this right now. Let's change the date and we're going to negotiate on XYZ. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Out here, that's my other advice, is everything is negotiable. Once it's on paper, no. But before that, yeah, like you can, you can talk about it. So that way, even with COVID, I've, I've still made great money. I've never had a problem. And places that didn't, you know, quite necessarily have the amount that I would usually be making, we had a discussion about it. Yeah, and you worked we it out, right. Spent. So it was cool. So I was like, okay, well, then I would like this. And can we do this? And then renegotiate on the state. And I've been nothing but yes. So that's yeah. the thing. Never assume what people are making. Never comment on what people are making. Right. And you now stay in your lane. And if you want something, ask. Just be careful. Like you have to be realistic. Like if there's a, a venue here that's been closed for a year and they're just trying to reopen, they don't have two grand to give you. Right. But you can discuss, okay, look, I'll do an extra set and then, then we can do this money. So like, you know, you negotiate that way. That's what's cool about Vegas is that it's a very open forum when it comes to the, the money you make, which is really cool because you can yeah. negotiate stuff. There's tips. You know, there's always, you know, the there's a lot thing. of, there's a lot of dynamics. And also too, if they can give you, you know, 20 weeks a year that comes into play. Oh, it's all that stuff. It's all the common, common sense business stuff. Right. Yeah. It's like, you've got to, you know, it's a lot. I think where performers are neglected is they, uh, they don't get that business training. Right. There's so much focus on the look, the, the singing, the dancing, the body, the getting, that, getting the like, gig. Yeah. Get, get the gig, get the gig. And then like, you know, people don't know how to, you know, read a contract, like get a lawyer. Like I have a wonderful Mark Trados is my entertainment lawyer and he's worth every penny. Cause whenever I've gotten like a pickle of a situation, it's handled like that. And I don't have to worry about it. And his name like already strikes fear into the hearts of the week. It's like, by <laughs> day, they're like, oh, uh, and I'm like, mm. yeah. Okay. But if you, you do have, good business, they don't have to worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> so. There are certain things because there, there is gray area and the, the, the laws in Nevada are very different from New York. Yeah. Right. You know, but like funky little, like, cause it's really a random state. We just have this random city here. So we've got some different, you know, rules and stuff. Uh, that just don't apply other places. So it's so important wherever you live as a musician or performer, know, know the entertainment laws and what your rights are and yeah. you know, get representation. Even if you just have somebody uh, who reads over, have a separate party read over your contract. Yeah, if you have, even if you have a friend that's a very experienced person yeah. in entertainment, even if they're not an attorney, they can look through. And a lot of that stuff, when you look at these contracts, it just, the stuff that's weird pops right out if you know what you're looking at. <laughs> you know? Wait. What? Like there are certain gigs where if I hadn't read the contract, I wouldn't have been allowed to do any other gigs anywhere else. Right. Like, like they, and I was like, no, sorry. Yeah, yeah. You don't. Enough. Like, yeah. Unless you're going to give me like a hundred grand a year. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. I'll have a sleeping bag in the back. And I'll be here. But yeah, it's like, unless you, you know, can pay me more. No. Or if, you know, if there's a promo, I want to get paid for that promo as well. Or like yeah. in rehearsal, I would like to get paid this. Because a lot of times, you know, rehearsals are not paid. It's included in your pay. So just make sure, like I've heard people complain in a rehearsal about not getting paid. And I'm like, did you read your contract? Because yep. eight hours of rehearsals is included in our pay, whether or not we do that rehearsal. Yeah, we had that with CERT. Like, they, could, they, could, they could make us rehearse up to 15 hours a week as part of our contract, yeah. although we never did for the musicians. Yeah, but they could have done that. And that was part of the deal, right? It's so important to, to read it and to... Um, don't, and I would say too, like, don't be afraid to, to change. Don't be afraid. If I stayed in my own head, you know, I wouldn't have been as successful as I've been. Like you have to, you know, go uh, appro save your money, approach everything. Like it's going to close tomorrow. Yep. Exactly. That's a good thing. Cause you just never know. I've, I've been in shows that closed when they were sold out because the producers got in a fight right. and I've been like, sold out. everything's great. Yeah. You know, you just have to be, be prepared and, and, uh, don't be afraid to, um, to change your look, to change, you know, how you feel about 
you know, certain types of music or whatever. And also, you know, don't be afraid to uh, not listen to, you know, something toxic or like advice from somebody that you're kind of like, mm, you know, mm. ask people that you respect, you know, ask people that, you know, don't have an agenda. Right. Exactly. They think, um, cause that, that makes a huge thing. Cause like, like you said, like you celebrate other bass players because you're like, we're all different. You know, we all play. Yeah. All There's the not, not, yeah and I, I learned that in LA, you know, like you're just not going to be yeah. right for every gig. Some guys just, they only play jazz. They know every song. Like that's not me. And it's not probably not ever going to be me. But mm -hmm. I, you know, but be as versatile as you can where, like you said, it, it's in your lane. It makes sense. Yeah. Um, Just figure it out. If you don't know, like there are a lot of like, uh, I know a lot of standards, but like, cause you know, I was like a total nerd growing up and I was like, Gershman. So like, <laughs> I was a geek, but like, there are a lot that I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I started to see that people would ask for standards. And I was like, oh my God, I need to learn that. Or like, you know, the other night poor Dan, I felt so bad. Uh, a guy gave us 20 bucks and he was like, play Tori Amos. And I was like, yeah, that. which is cool stuff. But yeah. I was like, the only one I know, no, it's like silent all these years, which is very difficult to play. It's like all over the place. He literally listened to it. He went, all right. Oh, Dan, <laughs> Dan your, he's just like, all right. And he's yeah. like, Doo -doo -doo. but he literally listened to it and was like, all right, go ahead. And, and Dan's played with everybody. Dan's played with everybody from Sheena Easton to Rich Little to <laughs> it's everybody. Ridiculous. Yeah. I will say Vegas has the most magical magician musicians ever. I've just seen people be like, what's that song? Okay, yeah, let's, okay, sure, no problem. And yeah. I'm like, but you don't, yeah. you don't Fearless. do it. Yeah. But I've gotten to a point now where I've done that. Like we've had people, we're not really a, a request fan, but every once in a while we would get a request and this guy wanted, um, uh, some I can't even remember anymore like you are so beautiful to me like one of those songs right. where I was do I really know that song is there a verse I was yeah, like, you, you, it's all those songs that we've heard all of our lives but you'd never actually learned the song <laughs> it's like you don't I'm like yeah what then I'm like huh and right. we literally I was like listening to it writing the lyrics on my iPad and I was like just keep vamping just keep vamping <laughs> like no. I was like hit it but that's like one of the cool that is very Vegas it's like um uh, uh rocky brown's one of those singers right. i love her but she writes her own material but my god you can be like what's the rap on blah yeah. blah blah and she'll be like I don't, blah, blah, blah. like it's not like that and you're like how do you know that she's like i learned like she's encyclopedia yeah she's a freak <laughs> and she's like and i wrote this song and i did this video and it's amazing like yeah. her and jason fans are like this ridiculous music team but They're like a power couple <laughs> yeah but they're smart they know he's he knows how to work a house band and like what it's need like that need there they're just really like one of the best gigs i've ever subbed in on was lms uh with isaac uh taub as the music director mm -hmm. and he literally put in my in-ear a click track and then cued me in the in-ear because everything's on you know right you know, what's funny, like what's funny about that is actually I did the Soul Train Awards with Stevie Wonder and I was, I was a sound guy for that. And Stevie has, a lot of people don't know this, but he has a guy that always travels with him. It's his, it's his assistant and he's uh -huh. on the microphone. So when Stevie's singing, the assistant's on the microphone, he can feed him lyrics. He can tell him what song's coming up. He does that the entire yeah. show. And it was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. That, I was like, how could I, that would drive me nuts. But <laughs> it, like literally, cause I was kind of like, I hope I count right. Like, I hope I come at the right time. Cause like, it's just like a train right. and I'm in there going, Sometimes. and also I hear Isaac go, okay, Ann. I'm like, huh. <laughs> and he's like behind me, you know, like seven feet tall behind me with his trumpet. Yep. And he's like, All right, Ann, you're coming in. The verse is going to start three, two, one, go. And I'm like, la, 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 la. <laughs> like it was Not the funny. most organized. I was yeah. so blown away. I was like, that was like the most organized experience of all time. But like, there's a lot of artists like him out here who have really perfected that, you know, train of a house band where like, you have to entertain this group in this venue fast and loud and go. Like right. Chris Phillips is like the God of that. When I stepped in with him, I was like, that's a train that just goes, hope you can make it girl. And <laughs> like, ah, but yeah. he's so smart and how he, you know, combines all that together and it, it, it works so well. So you can step in and he knows, that's the other thing too, pay attention to other performers, pay attention, especially ones that, you know, are successful. 
watch how they work the crowd out here. It's different. It's different than New York. Like no one wants to hear a musical out here really because a lot of people, English isn't their first language when they come here. Exactly. So yeah. it's a different thing. That's where Cirque has been so smart. Yep. And it's, you know. I just being, had that conversation with somebody else that that's why they're global because it doesn't, that, that actually people may, be not, may not even know this, but the Cirque stuff, the language is all gibberish. It's all just made oh, up. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't really, they work with linguists to, to develop it, but it doesn't. It's like, bibbity, like I've learned some of their songs before. It's hard. <laughs> and, and like, yeah. I've like, like the tears are like right here of frustration. Cause it's like, Hey, not got a food. I see I feel it. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't like, know what this means. <laughs> but it's yeah. genius. It's absolutely. They have combined spectacle with right. universal language, which is like one of the smartest things I've ever. I love Sir. I think they're fantastic, but that's the thing. Like when you're out here, as a singer performer, working the crowd out here is very different. Cirque has perfected that. Absinthe has perfected that. There right. are certain, uh, Zoe Bowie has perfected that, like Sky to Miles. Like there are certain people who really have paid attention. And I watch, it's like school. I'm like taking notes, taking. Yeah. And those are people that all work a lot. They're very busy. Oh, right. I'm taking notes all day, every day. Working with Jen Romas. Yeah. Oh my God taking notes all day every day because i'm yeah. like how is she do oh look at that and they don't necessarily she's a she's a dancer she's not a vocalist right but doesn't like pay attention to musicians and like how they perform and how they do even if it's not your instrument or not what you do mm -hmm. pay attention because you'll do nothing but learn and yeah, that i worked I, I worked with j-lo actually i did uh we did we were her dance again tour. We prepped that in LA for two months and it was interesting watching Jennifer work and her team, because that's the thing. It's very educational. If you, if you pay attention, mm -hmm. like, is she the most amazing singer? Probably not. She's a singer dancer, but she knows her lane. She knows exactly. Her, yeah. Yeah. She knows exactly what, what she's doing. And, but it was very educational, even watching her audition musicians, that whole thing. It was me, the sound guy, her and her musical director in the room watching this and, wow. and the conversations. And it was, and it, and a lot of it's like what you would expect, but that kind of stuff, a lot of it's just, you know, paying attention as an entertainer and learning from others that have done it before you or are doing it bigger than you are is so important. Right. Yeah. It's really important because it's like how, how in the world, are you going to learn? Like you have, that's the thing. It's, I think a, a misconception people make is like, Oh, once I get this gig, I've made it. It's like, right. You're no, always, you're always, it's, it's always the next gig. It's always it's the next. <laughs> you know, my husband worked on films at Culver studios for about 15 years. And like mm -hmm. he worked with like, you know, everyone from like Tom Cruise to Will right. Ferrell and all these people. And uh, he worked on like mission impossible and uh, Chicago, like all these movies and he was like it was so interesting to see the different the process you know, how they work and he was like you see why they still work mm -hmm. he was like he worked with tom cruise he's like tom knew everyone on the team he goes he treated everyone incredibly he was like he was always early he's like, with no drugs not drunk like did right. his job everyone he bought out magic mountain for the entire crew and their families as a thank you he goes i would work for that man any day there's a reason why they're successful. Yeah. yeah. And that's why he's, you know, and people are constantly jealous. They're trying to bring him down and be like, he did, well, he yelled at somebody. I was like, well, he yelled at someone because they put the lives and jobs in jeopardy of right. 15,000 people. Right. You know, it's, it's just very interesting. And uh, I think the thing too, I would say is, you know, keep your chin up. Like, it is hard. There's always, you know, people trying to like, you know, bring you down or, or, you know, start a rumor or whatever and it's like yeah. as hard as that is um just keep doing your work yeah how, and um how, how can people find you online i know you have a lot of social media and uh the best way is my instagram that's the one i i'm always you know paying attention to more okay. um and that, uh ann martinez lv for las vegas and it's ann with an e like ann of green gables right. um, <laughs> that's fine that, you spent your you spent your whole life saying that right <laughs> every day Plus that was like one of my favorite books. Um, I certainly wasn't as precocious and had a big personality like like that character. I was more like like Anne Green Gables, like in the back, like in a cabinet with a book with a candle, like sadly, you know. But um, but yes, that's the best way to to find me is uh, at Anne Martinez LV on Instagram. Um, yeah. People can always 
send me a message, ask me a question. Awesome. Got, um, I'm just going to plug myself in. I've also got my uh, costume line I started um, because of COVID um, at St. Showgirl, and they can always write me there too, especially if they have any questions about, um, you know, costuming and looks out here. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's part of the glamour of Vegas. And yeah, and we'll, and we'll include all of your links um, in the podcast description so people can find you. And that's awesome that you're yeah. willing to chat with people. You have a I mean, Anytime. that's one of the reasons, yeah, and that's one of the reasons why I want to talk with you because, I mean, we've known each other for quite a while, but you have a lot of great advice, you have a lot of great experience to offer, um, and it's 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 awesome for people to hear from people that are actually out, out in the world doing it and being successful. Yeah, I mean, anything, if people ever have a question or they need anything, like, I'm a big, like, ask, 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 ask questions, and I'm always here, if anyone needs me, like, I'll get back to you right away as soon as I can, like, I won't blow you up, like, just ask me, and Awesome. And that way I can at least point you in the right direction or help you myself. Like that's the thing out here. Um, it's very like a old school, like throw each other a bone kind of a thing. So I'm all about, you know, question if anyone needs anything, if they're new to town or if they are kind of feeling stuck or they're thinking about, you know, going into this business or even if they don't live here, if they live somewhere else and they need some advice, like right. please. Ask. And anytime it's never a bother, I would love to help. And that way, you know, we're just always paying it forward yep. in our business because we we have such a unique career. It's important that we stick together and, and support each other because nothing but good comes from that. Like literally right. nothing but good comes from being kind and supporting each other. Nothing bad will happen. Like that's yeah. the coolest thing about it. It's like, there's no catch 22. There's no nothing. It's just nothing but good stuff. So Positivity, I'm all yeah. Very yeah, I'm just all about it. Cause like what, what harm comes from wishing someone a good show that night? Exactly. It's just cool. Yeah. And it makes everyone feel good and, and keeps our business alive. And that's a, a really, one thing I really, really love about Vegas is that the vast majority out here just genuinely love music and they're supportive. And that's, that is a really cool thing. And I'm, I'm extremely proud to be a part of it. And you know, onward and onward, we've got nothing but good stuff coming. So I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as the world opens up again, it's, uh, yeah. I think we're going to, we're going to have a, I think a rocking year once we get all rolling, but thank you May so much. For, yeah. Thank you so much for joining me. And, uh, yeah, and we'll, like I said, we'll, we'll have all your tags and all that stuff. So people can find you on the uh, podcast description and, and, uh, have an awesome day doing your thing. I know you're, I know you've got a lot of stuff happening, so it's, oh, it's yeah. pretty cool. I've, currently I have cats, you know, pawing at my soul right now. That's okay. I know they're, they're like, jealous. Hold me, hold me, hold me. <laughs> But no, and, and thank you for, uh, you know, you're always just like, you're just an awesome dude, A. Thank you. Um, such a shame you're not that talented, though. Such a shame. <laughs> you could just practice I, you know, I, I have attention to like deficit this. disorder. That's the problem. Oh. I do like 10 different things. <laughs> Me too. Yay. I know, um, I know. But no, thank you for, just thank you for what you do. And, and you're always, you know, encouraging and supporting people. And you're always giving people who need a platform a platform. And, you mm -hmm. know, if you don't hear it enough, like, thank you for doing that. That means well, a lot to people. It. It gets them, it, you know, you never really, you never know like who's having like a really dark time. And then right. all of a sudden you give them a platform, what you did for them. Um, just trust me. I won't name names, but I've had people say like, <laughs> you've really, you've really helped them when they've needed well, that's that. So awesome. well, thank you for what you do. I appreciate it. Well, that, that means a lot for me, to me, for yeah. coming for you for sure. Um, have an awesome day, Anne. And, and say hi, say hi to your, 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 uh, your cat that's joining us. <laughs> it's all yeah. good. All right, hon. Thank you so much. Thanks. I'll see ya. Awesome.